Today in the test kitchen, we're gonna be doing the Instant Pot Classic Pot Roast. I'm making a classic pot roast, but the thing about it is pot roast takes forever. And I love it, but the rate at which it cooks is a little slow, right? So by using this Instant Pot, we're gonna speed it up to about an hour and a half, which this could take all day if you want it to. I mean, it's gonna take a minimum of three, four hours. So we're gonna save a lot of time by doing it in the Instant Pot. So the first thing I wanna do is start cutting my vegetables because I wanna do vegetables ready, have those ready to go, and then we'll get right into searing the roast. So when I segment an onion, I like cutting it vertically down the onion in half, and then put it on its side, and just get a couple slices in the side of the onion. Be careful with your fingers on this, try and keep them on the very top of the onion. Then go right with that grain of the onion, and then right across the grain of the onion. This way, you get a perfect dice, it's pretty quick, and then you don't have to worry about the onion being old, maybe having some of those fumes that come up, make you cry, you know? You try and avoid that by cutting an onion as quick as possible too. All right, so now we got the onion diced. That's ready to go in. Then what we're gonna do is, because the garlic in this recipe is just kinda cooking in there to give it flavor, we don't really have to do a full fine mince on the garlic. We can just kinda give it a crush. You're just trying to release the flavor of the garlic. Veg prep is done. So to keep this thing moving quickly, when you're using a chuck roast like this, it really helps to cut it in half. The Instant Pot isn't huge. It does have a good amount of space, but by cutting it in half, you're also doubling the surface area of this chuck roast. Plus, it's gonna help it sear faster, and it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna cook quicker. So what I do is, your chuck roast, this is, guys, about three pounds. Usually, this chuck roast is kinda cut against the grain when they cut it into this roast form. So by cutting it this way, I'm actually cutting it with grain, but it doesn't really matter, because I'm just making this big roast into two smaller roasts that will, will cook a little quicker and sear a little more evenly. So I'll season it, a little salt and pepper. You wanna get it pretty coated on the outside. A lot of the, and a lot of the flavor development's gonna be on the two, like the face of each of these. So that's where I'm gonna kinda of try and get the most salt. And then I usually try and, after I get some of the salt and pepper on here, I'll just kinda of take the meat and wipe around the board, try and pick up any of that extra seasoning, no reason to waste that. Get it seasoned on all sides that way. Anything that spills, you get picked up. All right, to sear in the Instant Pot, I set it to saute, and then if you look here, there's three colored dots. So if you go saute, there's low, normal, and more. So when you hit saute again, it goes normal, more is high. So that's where you want it to be to sear. So then I'll go in with a little bit of oil. And again, that's just to kind of get a little layer on the bottom so it doesn't stick too badly. That'll help it cook quicker. So you just want to really get a nice crust on two sides of each of these. So I kind of waited till it, you can see the oil running a little faster. It had a little wisp of smoke coming out. That's really important because you don't want to go into a cold pan and you got to hear that sizzle. If you don't hear the sizzle, I would just take it out and give it a minute because the sizzle is what's important. That's what, you, that's when you know that sear is happening. You can hear it, you can smell it, use your senses to know that it's doing its job. Otherwise, if it's just kind of barely simmering and bubbling, you're boiling again, you don't want that. This is where all that flavor comes from, is this searing step. By using this one vessel repeatedly, it saves us a lot of time and effort, and it's just one piece on your countertop. You don't have to worry about dirtying up your stove top, your countertop, and making a huge mess. So this does help kind of keep it simple, and I do like that it's got really high sides. That helps kind of maintain if any fat's trying to jump out, it kind of stays all right in here. We'll give you a little reveal here. So now, See, that's the kind of sear that I'm talking about. Like that's got a nice brown. And that's all flavor. So now that we've got a sear on both sides of this, I'm gonna pull out this other half and they're gonna hang out for a minute while I start sauteing some of the aromatics. So I'm gonna take this, hit the saute button, and I'm gonna set it to that normal setting, which is more of a medium, because I really don't want to burn my onions or my garlic. Um, so it'll cool down fairly quickly. So I'll just go in with those. And then I'm gonna add just a touch more salt because that helps draw the moisture out of the onions. Because again, we're just trying to let those onions release a little moisture. It helps to kind of bring that onion into the broth and just flavor everything together. So we got those going. So now I'll go in with the beef broth. And then the herbs. And then again, just to kind of move things along, go right up to high, because what I want to do is I want to get this broth kind of starting to just simmer, get it nice and hot before I uh, put the lid on, because the faster I get this hot, 
the faster it's gonna cook. So next, we'll go in with the two pieces of the pot roast. These two halves. And then the tomato product will go right on top. And the reason for this is you want a thinner liquid on the bottom of your pot rather than this thicker tomato product because it was something that's really thick can tend to get a little stuck to the bottom. So rather than trying to mix it with the stock or something like that, adding it to the top gradually incorporates it and then it is less likely to kind of burn to the bottom of your pot. And you can hear it's starting to bubble now, it's starting to simmer, so that now when I put this lid on and set it to pressure cook, it'll cook that much faster and it's gonna take less time for it to build up pressure. So this guy, he talks to you, which is nice. So we've got it closed, it makes that little cute noise and so you know it's closed, it's ready to go. Uh, make sure that the top is set to sealing because you can vent steam or you can seal. So make sure it's sealing because if you're venting, you're not pressure cooking. This is, a, this is an interesting fact that I always forget. You gotta hit clear first. It doesn't just automatically switch modes. You gotta kind of turn it off then turn it back on. So pressure cook, all right. So again, pressure, high pressure, that's what we want. And then we can adjust the time here. So we're gonna go 70 minutes, so an hour 10. And then you just let it go. It'll click on, say on, it'll come up to temp. And then this, once it comes up, it builds the pressure. There's a little valve here that pops up and that'll seal it shut so you don't accidentally open it during the process. And that valve won't drop back down until the pressure is appropriate to open this. So now it's on, it'll start building pressure. When the pressure is there, that valve pops up and it'll start counting down from the time that you program it in. Then once that countdown is over, it will keep it on warm for you until you're ready to open it. So at that point, you can either vent or just let it nat naturally decompress. And I prefer the natural decompression. It takes about 20 minutes, but it really helps the tenderness. So we'll just let this thing do its job, cook away for a while, and we'll come back when it's time to eat this pot roast. So now that little valve popped down, that means it's unlocked. You can hear, now it's open. And then we'll open her up. And then this is another cool little fact that I found out about the Instant Pot, again, after using this for like a year. It locks in a place. I don't know if it's that cool, but I think it's pretty cool. All right, so now we got this chuck roast here. And it's been cooking, gotten all tender here. So the other thing with using an Instant Pot as opposed to a braising dish or something like that, like a Dutch oven, you're not gonna have the sauce reduction as much. So I don't have, a, it's a thinner sauce, it's only, it's not really reduced, but it's, it may, it'll make a good gravy. And then again, you can use this for, you know, a main course of any sort. You can put it over noodles, you can put it with some potatoes. And so John here has been eyeing this this entire time we've been filming. So I think I'm gonna invite him over to That's try That's right, yes, thanks guys. So here's this, and you can just see how fork tender this guy is. And it's just breaking right apart. There you go, all That's right, so enjoy. Good. It's hot, mm. but super tender. Wow. That's perfect, just melts in your mouth right there. So this is just a really nice tender piece of meat. It's got all the flavor you're looking for in a classic pot roast, and there's so many different ways you can serve it. And that's it for the Instant Pot Pot Roast. So if you like this recipe, remember to like, comment, and share on social media. And join us next time here in the Test Kitchen. <laughs>